Hi, I'm Gabby, and welcome to Gabbing with Gabby. In this series, we sit down with fellow artists who've brought their knowledge and talent to the world via the internet. It's a chance for them to put down their brushes, step away from their easels, and to talk about themselves. It's also a great opportunity for all of us to get to know them better. Our guest today is Shane. Shane, please introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Shane Morrow. I am from Somerset, Kentucky. And thank you for having me, by the way. Yes, absolutely. Um, do you want to tell us about what kind of medium you paint with? Um, mostly oils. Um, I do some acrylic and just dabble in some different things, but mostly oil. Okay. And what do you prefer to paint as a subject? Uh, I do landscapes. I do um, wildlife. I've just started doing some floral. I'm Actually, I'm going to go do some classes here in the next little bit and try to get that going a little better, but mostly uh, landscapes and wildlife. Okay, awesome. Um, do you have any specific wildlife that you like to do, like specific types of animals? Oh, gosh, lions, tigers. Um, Stuff like that. Bears. Yeah, bears. Oh my. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, just mostly that kind of thing. Awesome. That's very cool. And do you um, teach as well? I do teach, yes. Um, I have a studio here in Somerset and I do um, Bob Ross style classes. Um, yeah, I've been doing it about a year and a half. Okay. And are you certified? I am certified, yeah. yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Very I got cool. My and how? About, uh, oh, probably about two years now, right at two years. So. Okay. How was that process for you? It was wonderful. I, I know it gets a bad rap and a lot of people say a lot of things about it, but I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot. Um, Faye Fletcher was my instructor and she was great. And um, I, just just being with other artists and you spend three weeks there and it was, I love the whole process. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She's a sweetheart. I really like Faye. Yeah, I've done, she's awesome. I've done with her. Yeah. yeah, she's really nice. Um, and when did you start painting? I started painting in 2014-ish, somewhere along in there. Um, mm -hmm. And just off and on for a couple of years, and I started really getting serious um, around 2016, somewhere along in there, and, and um, started doing it a lot. And um, I wanted to, I worked in retail for years, for about 31 years, and, you know, I go to work and people were like, why are you here? You need to be doing something, you know, something else. Um, and it just got me, you know, started thinking, and um, what can I do with this? So. Um, I started trying to pursue it and actually ended up opening a studio. And like I said, I went and got certified to teach and teaching is just amazing. I really enjoyed the whole, the whole process of teaching. And, um, you know, it's just, you get people in here that have never painted before and, you know, they get done with the class and they're just amazed at what they've been able to do, you know, and it's, it's, it's really fun, really rewarding. Mm -hmm. And how did you get into painting to begin with? My mom painted when I was a kid and, um, I used to sneak into her little studio and I would get her paint out and, you know, mess up her canvases and everything. And, um, you know, she was nice enough to let me do that. But I always remember back then I, I was interested and I was probably eight or nine when I was doing that. And it just stuck with me and I just, you know, finally got to the point where I, you know, I wanted to pursue it. So I started watching um, Jason Bowen, I think is the first painter I watched on YouTube. And um, it was back before, you know, everybody was putting videos on there. So there wasn't a whole lot to choose from. But I found him and uh, started watching him. And um, of course, I watched Bob Ross when I was a kid and, you know, everybody has. And then I, you know, when I got older, I started watching him more. And um, so that's kind of how I got started. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And in that time, since you started, how many pieces do you think you've done? Oh, my gosh, probably. I know I've sold almost 350 pieces. That's just what I've sold, and I would say probably five or six hundred. Well, yeah, that's a lot. Yeah, it's a lot of pictures. Um, do you have other hobbies outside of art? Oh yeah, I like. Um, I'm a huge baseball fan. I love the New York Mets. Um, they're not that great, but I love them anyway. <laughs> and um, I love to play golf. Um, and just music. I love music. All kinds of music. I love to listen to music and and just that kind of thing. Awesome. Very cool. Um, so let's see. Let me look at my questions. Painting. Do you plan to paint for a certain number of years or do you think you'll paint your whole life or what do you think? Oh, no, I'll paint the rest of my life. I can go um, three or four days and I start getting antsy, you know, and wanting to do a painting if I, you know, wait too long. So, so mm -hmm. yeah, I'll, I'll do it the rest of my life. And I just, I want to keep learning. There's so much you can learn. You can never learn everything there is to know. And, you know, it's just, 
it's really, I really enjoy it. Mm -hmm. um, so you started filming videos. When did you start filming yourself painting? Um, probably, I want to say two or three years ago, probably. Um, okay. I did a TikTok. I started doing TikToks two or three years ago, and I, I, uh, I think my third or fourth one kind of went viralish, and I got like, I don't know, hundred thousand views or something like that. It was, it was amazing. And then after that, I really had no luck on there, but it was, it was really cool. That one video was, but it was, it was really neat. Mm -hmm. And is there any specific reason that you started doing films? No, I just, uh, I think I saw somebody do it and I thought that would be really, really cool to try. And so I started doing time lapses and, and just different things. And then um, I've never really actually done an instructional video yet. Um, but I'm going to, and I've went live on there a couple times and kind of, you know, done a few things like that, but, but I'm going to start doing some instructional videos pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Especially if you already teach it, you know, you kind of have yeah. that knowledge of how to do that. So, yeah. Do you have, um, any specific landscape that you like to paint the most? Um, it's always fun to do a big mountain. Um, but I like them all really, um, you know, I, I just enjoy doing doing all of them. I've, mm -hmm. Seascapes were probably the one thing I always kind of kept on the back burner because they're really difficult. But um, once I started doing them, and they're like anything else, you just got to practice and you you get them. But but they were so hard, and I just always were like, yeah, I'll do them, you know, some other time. And, but but yeah. get around to it eventually. Uh, but I finally started doing them, and I really love doing those too. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Um, let's see. When you first started, what was easy for you? Um, I never really had a whole lot of problem with clouds. I know a lot of people have problems with clouds, but um, I've always been pretty good at those. Um, they came pretty easy and, um, you know, water and waterfalls um, weren't that difficult. Mm -hmm. I think the thing with clouds is people overthink their clouds. They I do. Always tell people. Yep. Don't overthink your clouds. <laughs> yep, they really do. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything that was specifically difficult for you? Uh, well, like I said, seascapes. Um, the big wave was, uh, it was difficult at first. And then um, I tell you one thing, when I first started, the first painting I did, um, of course, like I said, there weren't a whole lot of videos you could go look up to see how to clean up or, you know, what you're supposed to do. And so um the first time i did a painting and i had all the you know i had to clean up and i had no idea how to clean up so i took everything to the bathroom and put it in the bathtub and that did not turn out well at all i had blue paint all over the white bathtub and <laughs> so yeah that did not go very well but i finally got it all cleaned up but yeah that was, and learned some well, lessons I in the process. Video on, this is how you do it and this is how you don't do it but yeah <laughs> bring back the bathtub <laughs> yeah oh my goodness what a mess um yeah. if if you had any advice for somebody just getting started, what would it be? Um, if you're really interested in it, stay with it. I know some people get frustrated and they're like, you know, I can't do this, but you just have to stay with it and practice. The more you practice, the better you get, just like anything else. You know, you can pick up a guitar and you can't automatically play the guitar. You got to practice. And it's the same way with this. You've got to practice a little bit and learn the techniques and learn the right way and learn from somebody that knows what they're talking about. Um, you know, there's a lot of people out there that just, you know, you just got to look at their work and make sure that, you know, they know how to teach you before you take lessons mm -hmm. from them. Um, mm -hmm. you know, you see that a lot. I know I have a, I had a guy that come here and he took three or four lessons and now he's teaching, you know, at the library and stuff, and he's just not ready to be teaching it. And there's, you know, there's a lot of that out there. So just make sure you find somebody that, you know, won't get you doing bad habits and, you know, will teach you the right way to, to paint. Yeah. Yeah, it's easy to jump on that wagon of wanting to teach people when you first get started. Yeah. Yeah. And it's good to wait, I think, for other people's sake. It really is. It really is, yeah. Um, if there was anything that you could have known when you first started, what do you wish that would have been? Um, kind of like I was saying a minute ago with the cleanup, uh, I would have loved to have known mm -hmm. that. Um, I would have, you know... And you get and you watch people on YouTube and, they, you know, some people have been painting a long time and they make it look so easy. Bob Ross made it look so easy. And I know when I first started, I was like, you know, this is not that easy. And, um, you know, so that almost in itself made me want to just be like, yeah, forget it, you know, but I stuck with mm -hmm. it. But, you know, like I was saying, just stick with it and keep practicing and, and just try not to overwhelm yourself and, you know, start mm -hmm. out easy and, you know, build yourself up. Mm -hmm. Now, is this something that you do full time? 
Yes, I do this full time. I left my job at um, the retail place I was working at for 31 years and left my job. And um, yeah, I went and got certified and I have a studio uh, in the mall here in Somerset and we teach classes. Like I said, uh, we do probably uh, we try to do classes every other weekend um, on Friday and Saturday. Um, so we do that and then we do private classes and things with people. So it's mm -hmm. been really, really rewarding. Mm -hmm. I bet. That sounds like such a fun road to get to go down because I don't think a lot of people will ever get that opportunity. Yeah, so. it's, it's, I was I was nervous at first. Like I said, I'd been at that job for you know forever and was um, you know just you just got to make yourself do it. And you know if it don't work out, you can always go do something else. But um, I really wanted to try it, and you know so far so good. Awesome, that's great. And you must have started then teaching after all the Corona garbage. Yes, and I was so thankful that that um, it, it worked out that way because if I had a, if I had have started when all that went down, you know, I probably would have never made it. But um, mm -hmm. but yeah, I was glad that was over with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we all were. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Um, let's see who inspires you. Um, well, when I first started, like I said, um, I would watch Jason Bowen, his videos, um, but now there's all kinds of people. Uh, there's a guy called Stephen Conway. I don't know if you've ever saw him, but he has YouTube videos. He's really good. I watch him a lot. Um, he's got some different techniques and different things that I, I try to watch and, and learn from. Um, Dana Jester, as far as wildlife, he's one of the best wildlife painters there are. And um, so I've, I've learned a lot from him too. And my painting really, uh, I was really at a, I don't know. I could just not see any improvement, and I started going to uh, his workshops, him and Steve, and um, I've been to several of their workshops. But when I did that and started learning from uh, Dana, and I, I think that's when I started to improve. Um, mm -hmm. And I, before that, I had just you know watched YouTube and stuff like that, and you know I think that can only take you so far, and you really need to you know get hands on uh, from people that know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I don't think we talk I'm about that's when I could see my improvement and everybody else did too. You know, they were like, you know, what have you been doing? You're, you're doing something different. And I'm like, you know, it was going to those classes and, you know, learning from those guys. Yeah. I don't think we talk about that often about how you can kind of hit a wall of improvement. Yes. And I think that's, I think that's a good point. Yeah. And yeah. sometimes it's good to take a little break too. Um, you know, you get, it don't matter what you do, you get burnt out on everything and it's, it's good to, you know, take a little break and, you know, a week or so it's hard for me because i start having withdrawals after a few days but um it's good to step away from it for a little while and then come back and that always helps too yeah yeah, yeah definitely usually about a day or two and i'm like okay where's my paintbrushes <laughs> yeah. yeah um do you have a favorite piece that you have done of your own uh yeah i have several i think i've sold them all though, believe it or not i got a few at home that i have um that i haven't sold but Sometimes I'll do one and I'll think, you know, I, I want to keep that and then I uh, let it go and then I wish I hadn't. But um, and then there was one I did. It was like probably the fourth or fifth painting I did. And um, I was so happy with it and I kept it forever and I sold it and I wish I had not sold that. But um, it was one of my favorites. It was just just happened to turn out really good. I probably didn't know what I was doing at the time, but it it really turned out good and I liked it and ended up selling it. So. Mm -hmm. A whole lot of happy accidents. <laughs> a whole lot of happy accidents. Yes, absolutely. absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. I have one painting um, that I sold that I'm like, I wish I wouldn't have, but I sold it to my niece so I can go see it anytime. Well, yeah, you can go get it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, let's see. What does painting mean to you? Oh, gosh, it's everything. I mean, it's, um, you know, you can be in a bad mood and just sit down and paint and it all goes away. And, you know, I tell people too, and I don't know if it makes sense or not, but when I'm doing a painting, it's like I'm inside of that painting. I just get lost in there. And, um, you know, I don't know if you can understand that if you don't paint, but um, it's, it just takes, you know, like I said, bad day or something going wrong. You sit down to a painting and you're immediately in a better mood and feel better. And mm -hmm. yeah, so it's it's just it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK, so I have some bonus questions for you. Do you have an all time favorite student? or a favorite moment in teaching that you'll never forget that you'd like to share? Um, I don't know if I can point out just one, but like I said earlier, uh, what makes me happy uh, teaching is when people come in and they're just, 
I had some people that come in and I had one guy that said, I'm wasting my time, but I wanted to take this. My wife wanted to do it. So, you know, I thought I'd come with her. And when he got done, he was like, oh my God, you know, I can't believe I did that. And just the joy and the happiness that people, um, that it brings people. And, and that's probably, you know, the most, the best thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, okay. Bonus question number two, if you could have any type of animal on the planet, any type of animal as a pet, what would it be and why? It would be a lion. I have a thing with lions. I love lions. Um, I paint them and um, I, I don't know. But yes, I would have a pet lion. Absolutely. <laughs> probably eat more. A male or a female? Uh, probably a male. Yeah. Yeah. yeah ones that with big, big black mane. manes and yeah. Yeah, they're, they're my favorite. I like to watch those um, discovery shows too with lions and different things. I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I think it'd be fun to play with their tufty little tails. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Um, Okay, I have one more bonus question for you. What is one thing that's on your bucket list of things to do in your life? Um, there's a few places I would like to travel. I've always wanted to go to Alaska. I've never been to Alaska. Um, so that's probably one. Um, I don't know what else right off. Um, but I love to travel, so there's places I would like to go. I'd like to go to Hawaii. Um, Hawaii and Alaska is probably the two places I would like to go. You know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. there would definitely be bucket list. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been to Hawaii before? No, no. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've only been to the big island and I know every island has like a, you know, something different that it offers. But I always tell people like, don't ever discount the big island because there is so much to do there. It's so beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I get people that come in all the time and, you know, they look at the mountain paintings and they're like, oh, you've probably been to it. I'm like, no, I've never been, but I want to go so bad to Alaska and, you know, just see it for real. Some of these paintings that we do. But. Yeah. Yeah. I, I haven't been there either, but that's definitely on my list too. It's a beautiful area. Yeah. Um, I think that's all the questions that I have for you. Do you have any sort of final thoughts that you'd like to share with everybody? Um, not that I can think of at the moment. Okay. We've, we've covered everything. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for coming on. It's been um, great to get to know you and interview you and I appreciate it. Well, thank you. I really appreciate it. I've enjoyed it. Yeah. Yes. Um, my last question for you, where can people find you? Um, Facebook, uh, Instagram, just Shane Morrow. Just look, look me up there. And, um, and then on TikTok is, uh, Shane Morrow eight, the letter or the number eight. And, um, so that's, that's my three. And then, like I said, I have a YouTube, but I don't have anything on there yet, but I'm going to, so just keep an eye out okay. for that. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I'll put those links in the description of the video so people can find you and okay. we'll go from there. So thank you again so much for being on. Awesome. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. Okay, guys, I think that's it for our interview today. If you guys have any questions or comments, put it in the comment section of the video and we will do our best to address them. Again, I'm Gabby and this is Shane. Until next time, I really do hope that you guys fall in love with painting just as much as we have. Bye, guys. Bye. Right, thank you.